Morning everybody, it's Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Eventually, we are eventually um, doing the ceiling, when we're papering the ceiling. Now you've known um, all the way through this playlist that um, we've, we've converted the dining room into a, a kids playroom stroke games room. Now we've painted it black, we use the Lick Pro paint, we've got a matte emulsion on the walls, Lick Pro, and we've got the eggshell finish on the woodwork. Um, that was probably the last video you saw in this series, in this playlist. Coming back a few days later, it looks stunning. I'm gonna say it looks stunning, but as with any matte paint, just don't touch it. You know what I mean? Particularly when you go into dark colors. If you touch it and polish it up, it's one of those colors that is very difficult to touch in. Don't touch in with a brush. Yes, I've tried to. I've had to go back with a roller just to any areas that I was a little bit suspect with because somebody had touched it. I had to go with a roller and re-roll it out and feather it out for the wall. It doesn't look too bad. Me being a professional, I'm looking for things that the ordinary person wouldn't notice. And to be fair, when my wife came in this room, she says, what are you looking at? So it says it all. And by the time we've got everything in this room and pictures on the wall, who's going to be looking at? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. But anyway, today, right, we're getting on with this papering of the ceiling. Now, those that are the Eagle Eye DIYers, amateurs, paper hangers will notice mm, the Abbey Road going across the ceiling. If you're not old enough for Abbey Road, I'm not old enough for Abbey, Abbey Road, but I do know what Abbey Road is. We've got the black lines going across the wall rock. Now this is because the paper that's going on the ceiling is quite a dark paper. And if there is any movement, I'll put my box down, if there is any movement on that butt joint and it shows through that white lining paper, I don't want to see it. Now I've hung many times before photo wall wallpaper and it is very nice to hang. And I don't anticipate any issues with the butt joints. But just in case anything is a little bit off, because the way plastering can be, can force your paper not to always butt joint when you want it to. So if there is a band where the joints are corresponding, you shouldn't see any white coming through. Well, you won't do. Now what I've done, this photo wall wallpaper is only 450 wide. Now you know that the wall rock that put on the ceiling was 550 centimetres. And that'd be massive, wouldn't it? 550 mil, so it's half a metre, 550, 55 centimetres. These widths are only 45 centimetres, so 450 mil, which isn't, it's not very wide, is it? I've not got a, any line in here. So what I've done, when I've measured this room up, and I'll just get me little notes, when I measured this room up, I've allowed, on the sides and on the, the length, I've allowed two inches salvage, which on the whole is 100 millimetres, so four inches. That allows two that side, two that, two inches either side as a salvage, that is plenty. But because these lengths come in a panel, they come in a roll, they come in one big roll and each section is geared up for the length that you require. Now, I measured up and this room measures, scribbled on the back of a fag paper, it's probably a tax bill. Right, the measurements for being exact, on my length, my longest length is 3.16, so 3,160 millimetres. On my shortest, which is behind us and across this wall, the longest length, because it was just out slightly, is 3,050, so 3050. So I've allowed, I've added 100 to each of those measurements. So on the width, I've actually got what I ordered. And talk about expensive paper. This ceiling was, cover all that up, 370 pounds and I managed to get a 25% discount for a Black Friday deal back in November. 
before Black Friday, but it was a 25% discount. So all in all, with VAT and the delivery, it came to £277. It's going to be on for a long while. But the measurements that I actually specified and asked for to get the actual size that I want, on the width, I've ordered 315 centimetres. So that gives me 100, that gives me two inches either side to trim off, that's fine. But on the length, i.e. the longest part, because we're hanging from the light source and we're coming back, because that was a bit longer, you, you've got to work out what you're going to be left with because each width is only 450. So because I worked it out that 450, 450, 450, 450, I was getting a strip at the end. What I didn't want to do is have a daft little strip so I over-measured this length coming all the way along here. So on this length, instead of me ordering 3,260, I ordered a little bit more to give me a little bit more tolerance. It cost a minuscule amount extra. So I've actually ordered on the, the full length 3,360. So I've allowed an extra 200. Now that should give me a strip at the end that is a little bit more than what the descent, if I'd have ordered it, just adding 100 to. Makes sense, hopefully it does, hopefully it does. So that's what I've got to do. The other thing I'm going to mention to you is, with photo wall wallpaper, think it through. Because these papers hang left to right. They're geared up, and I'm going to show you, they're geared up, to start one side of a room and work the way to the other. Don't be thinking, oh, I'll start at the right-hand side and come around. I mean, I, I prefer working right to left, but these hang left to right. <coughs> You've just got to get used to it. So when you get it off the roll, think about where your first length's going to go and where the next length's going to go. That makes sense, doesn't it? So where I'm going to be starting on this wall here, this here will be my first length, and then the second length is there. So do I hang from that bottom end or this top end? You've got to think it through. I know which I'm doing, don't worry. <laughs> That's a professional. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention, it does come with its own paste. It's a packet paste. Mix it up. If you're using this, mix it up as per instructions. I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to keep with what I know works, what I've used before, and it's the Wix tub paste. Straight out the tub, roll it on the ceiling or the wall and hang your paper. So all in all, we're really, really ready to go. Just a couple of things before we start. As I said, these papers, you'll get the idea. They come in a roll. Now this is the picture we're gonna be going for. So it's a bit random. Now, this piece that's coming off the roll first is roll on the roll. It's length one of eight. So this is only one roll, so you've got one of one roll, and you've got, this is your first length of eight. Self-explanatory. The next one, as you come down, will have a perforation like da, 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 dot dot to cut. You can cut that and that will be number two. So work off the roll, cut each one as you require, and hang it as per instructions. Just be a bit careful if you get any paste on the surface, just a damp cloth, and wipe it off. Now, I've gone for the more expensive, durable finish. This, there's a standard finish and like a, a premium finish. I went for the extra. It cost, I think it was another 50, 60 pounds, but in, in the bigger scheme of things, we get in a discount. It didn't, didn't really bother me, so we went for that. It's got a slight matte sheen, if that's an oxymoron, but hopefully, can you see that? Hopefully, it'll be a hard wearing finish for anybody touching it on the ceiling. Yeah, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. So let me just put that down. There's one more thing to say. Right, my first length, because I've allowed enough tolerance all the way across, where it's 450, 
I'm going to be hanging it offset and I'm going to hang from that coving edge. You can just see there, from this coving edge there out, 400. So there'll be 50 millimeters that will be being cut off there. That will take into account, let me about that. That will take into, into account anything that's running off on that ceiling. Hopefully you'll understand that. And then once I start going all the way across, we've got enough make sure we haven't run out because this is eight lengths. Now the eighth length, because it's only a strip, they only print that strip that is required. They don't give you a full length. They give you, if, it, if the last strip is only 100 millimeters or 150 millimeters, that's what it'll be printed at. They won't take the chance and give you, or won't, they won't give you a full width. So just be mindful of that. That's why I've over ordered. So if it was going to be a hundred millimeter strip, I've now got 200 to play with just in case anything, it's not going to run out, but just in case. So that's always uh, good to be mindful for. Um, tools, got a hanging brush. I've got the squeegee. I've got straight edge cutting. I have got a pencil and I have had a ruler to mark out where the 400 is across there and I've also got set up there if you can see it pointing up I've got a laser liner that's gone all the way across that ceiling I don't know whether you'll see it if I put the goggles over I'm not sure can you see that it doesn't matter if you can't but the laser because I marked some little pencil marks I've got the laser lined up with those pencil marks and then gone with another pencil, well, same pencil, and mark bigger lines across the ceiling. So when that laser is turned off and moved, I know where that laser was that went from that side there all the way to this side up here. So I have actually got a pencil mark all the way across. You could use a, a, a you know, straight edge or you could have somebody with a chalk line or something like that, but I don't want chalk on the ceiling. I've got me black bands. I don't want any more. Don't want any more mess on the ceiling. So without further Hugh Pugh, Barney McGrew, I'm going to get some pasted and we're going to start getting some on. I've also got me a bucket of hot water, warm water, um, for if I need to wipe anything off. I am a little bit apprehensive about wiping this matte emulsion. It is a durable mat, but I'm a little bit apprehensive about and wiping it off. So yeah, we've spoke for a good 10 minutes. I've explained it. Hopefully you understand what we're going to be doing. Any questions, please ask. And while I'm here, thank you very much for the support from people who are giving me super thanks and the people that have also sent um, money to buy me a coffee. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready to get my first length on. What I've done, I've pasted all the way across, and I know where I've got to paste too because I've got my black bands. Now I'm using the Rota Gold long pile roller again. I'm getting plenty on, not, not over piling it, but I'm not rolling it out. Now, top tip Tuesday, when you're working with these photo wall wallpapers, spend a bit of time, draw off each roll and cut each length ready for you to hang because they're often reverse, uh, no, they don't come off the roll as they should be hung. They might be reversed round. So as you pull it off, you will see that the first length's ready for you, but then, then the next one's actually upside down. So if you cut it, then back roll it, then you'll have everything correct for what you're needing. Now, as I said earlier, hang from left to right. Now, as soon as I'm doing a ceiling, I've got to treat it like a wall and think which way would be the left to come right. So my first length, will be hung down there, just there, and that's actually, let's call it the top left corner. Now, I've said I've allowed plenty of paper salvage offcut, so what I'll be doing, I mean, clearly that would be coming off, it's just for purposes so know where we are. I'm going to allow two inches waste before I bang it into, bang it, I'm not going to be banging it, but before I actually put it into the actual um, edge of the coving. So I know that this two inches can be there and by the time I get to the other side, which is over here, there'll be two inches that side as well, which will be cut off. 
that will give me enough tolerance all the way across now that if it does waver, I'm not going to be losing any paper. I have had an instance where this paper, a photo wall wallpaper, had been measured by an interior designer and they'd not measured it correctly and not gave me 100 mil, i.e. four inches of salvage to cut off and it was very tight very tight at some parts i wasn't even cutting anything off but it all turned out all right in the end thankfully so let's let's get this on and see how we go we're hanging off each individual roll and um, if you hear any swearing um, i apologize got, i've got my hanging brush i've got my squeegee and i've got a sharp blade in my pocket ready for trimming. Don't forget, I'm also stepping this in. Can you see me? Don't forget, I'm also stepping this in because we are measuring, we have measured 400 and I'm hanging to this line that I can see behind the paste. So this first length will actually be cut as a 400 and not 450 because we're not going straight into the angle. So yeah, uh, let's see how we go on.
We've done it, we've got that first length on. Bit of a fiddly one because it was the first length and I was cutting a bit more off than you probably would normally do. So let's try and get you there. Now, nothing to really see at the moment. What you'll have seen me doing is using the squeegee to get into those edges. I cut the corners with the shears. I don't know. A top tip. When you come into a corner, cut into the corner, but then actually cut off a bit of excess that you're not needing. That helps you actually get that corner that you've cut into the sides to fold in. That, you've probably seen me doing it and it probably makes sense with me actually doing it. But all in all, that's gone on a dream and I've just carefully wiped with a warm sponge just around the edges, just the face top edge of that coving, just so I don't polish up any of that black because black can be a nightmare. And I'm sorry that first length was probably about 10 minutes long, but you've got to see how to get that first one on. The next one, I'll get all the way, well, the next one I'll do off camera. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the middle because there's a ceiling centre there now that I'll unscrew and I'll paper straight over that fitting and then cut it out and then the light will go back in. And those of you know that that light that's fitted that changes colour, there's a link in the Amazon Associates below if you want to purchase one of those. They're about £23, but they do change colour and they also do a natural light from it, so that'll be quite good. Um, all the way across, I don't know whether you've seen the photos a bit earlier on, but that width of last length is only 210. There's ample on there for me getting that last stretch down at the bottom because I didn't need as much as that, but I've done it right. We've offset that one and now we're gonna come all the way across. So um, I'll see you in a few more um, strips. Right, we're quack quacking. We're cracking on nicely. We've got three lengths on now. It's looking pretty good. I would say, let me expose you now. I would say with this paper, you've got to work at the joints because if your plasterboard ceiling is slightly running out, as I've explained before, you can get, come the other way, you can get your paper going where the board plastering is, which sometimes, takes your paper, takes your butt joint where you don't want it to do. So you've got to manipulate it, just wipe your sponge over the joint edge, not with loads of water, wipe any excess paste that could be using, just use your fingers, push it across and use your seam roller. I'm using currently two seam rollers, I've got a single arm and then a, I don't know if you've seen that, it's a double arm barrel, can you see the difference? One's flat, one's rounded. Both of them are working for me, so I'm just manipulating the paper as I need to do it. Now, I'm, I'm clearly not going to show you how to be papering the ceiling because it'll be take, take too long. But what I'm going to say is now, I'm just going to remove that ceiling fitting for the light. I've just got a drill. I'm just going to unscrew it. Don't forget, turn off your electrics. If you're if in doubt, turn them off at your fuse board. I'm just gonna let, let that hang loose, but I'm gonna put the screws back in to the fitting, just loosely, so we know where they are when we come with the paper. And the paper will be hung straight over that fitting.
As simple as that, just take that light fitting down. So all I need to do now is literally just paper straight over that, make a little cut where the screws are, get it all down, then when it's dried off, I will cut the area that's the cable block fitting just there and get that back in place. It's not rocket science, don't overthink it. Just make sure you know where your blues and your reds are going and if you've got the old style electrics or not. But all in all, we're cracking on nicely and I'll see you at the end when we're getting that last length on. We're nearly at the end, we're nearly at the end of the tunnel. It's a very dark tunnel. Right, we've got that ceiling almost on. What do we rate to that? A bit different. Now we're coming into that last strip there. Can you see? I've got it there. I'm going to point to it in that corner there and it goes all the way along. So if I can pan to that corner there. Now because I'd measured and allowed for enough and we were working with two inches either side, we knew this room wasn't square. We knew the angles aren't going to be 45 degree. 45 degree better not be. Be 90 degree corners and that two inch tolerance, that 50 mil salvage either side gives you that leeway if it's running out. And it, it, it has run out because this edge up here has gone, well, I'll do it there. This edge here has gone more than two inch and that side has gone a little bit less than two inch. But it means that the strip that we're putting in as the last eighth length it actually measures up there two and a half inches and that side there one and a quarter so it really tapers out now because I'd allowed enough tolerance that I wasn't just literally putting a minuscule stripping of colour can you see when I say they cut the eighth length they only give you what you've measured for and because the the widths are all in 450s they obviously print according to what your measurements all are. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim that down because I don't need all of that because I only need maximum three, four inches at most. I'm going to trim that down so I'm not working with all that excess and then I'm going to get that on. Now I have to say my pace has been fine. When you're hanging this sort of thing you're allowed to and it does say in this room, get it on with your hand, work it with your hand, manipulate it, get your hanging brush, Get your squeegee, get the air bubbles out. Work your way across it because you'll feel air bubbles if you've not caught it and got it down. So I've made sure I've gone over it and I've wiped it. This has been a nice paper to butt joint. My only negative is where I've got black and dark colours because the edges aren't coloured, because they're not black edges, you've got to make sure you get them as tight as you possibly can and get them down with that seam roller. I've done the best I can. They are all down. But a tip I would actually recommend to you is when you're hanging the initial lens before you actually squeegee it down and use your seam roller, I would say make them not overlap, but get them so they're just springing up like that because when you come with your seam roller, you'll push them down and push them back and get them as neat as you possibly can. Don't have a bit of a gap and try and force it across because you might find it's a little bit difficult to bump the paper. Whereas if you've got it just slightly protruding up, not overlapping, protruding, pushing up like that. By the time you come with your seam roller, you can push them back and get them into place. And I would say, I probably notice where slight joints are showing because of the white edge, but I don't think anybody else would. So on that note, let's get this last piece on and then we'll do a, a sum up of, we've done it. <laughs> and I'm quite impressed with the look. This is what I mean when I say I've got it down to a more workable size and I know that's too big but at least it gives me something to play with if I need to. So there's the top, we're working left to right still and it's the last strip I'm putting on. So um, catch you in a bit. Can you see me mother? God dear me, it's very dark in here. I've done, I've actually done it. Um, I've done a little bit of tidying up after I've got my last length on. I think start to finish, including the bits of videoing that I've done, I took about two and a half hours. 
so not bad and that was with me fiddling around and stuff and getting the light the light back on and just look at this remote control if you press it a couple of times it turns itself on there you go that's that office you know very clinical but if i press that nighttime light there Shall I press it? It fades off to a more subdued light, which is really good if you're watching telly. Or if your kids are having a bit of a party, you can press it and away we go. We've got color changing light. How impressive is that? Link below if you want to buy one of them. About 23 quid, I think. So really good, really, really like that. And then press it again, and you can go back to that. Looks like a moon, moon. But yes, let's turn it off. Yes, we've finished and I'm impressed. My only criticism of negativity with it is, particularly with this sort of paper, and I don't know whether you can see, let's see if we can drop down. With this sort of paper, where you've got black, it can be very critical on the joint trying to get them bought. Now, I got them bought the best I can, but I'm bought, bought, bought. I can see where they're bought, but I can see the edge of the paper. Now, if the paper was more of an all one color, I would probably have chalked the edges. And if you want to know about chalking edges, they're probably on a, a video in that playlist, one of my first videos that I ever did. But all in all, I'm liking it. And let's see if I can get you off camera, just to give you a pan round. Of course we can. So. I won't stand against the light. Let's go over here. Can you see that? How impressive is that? Let's go this way. I'm liking it. It's probably a better way of doing it. Can you see? And it was a lot easier it was a lot easier to actually, there's the light gone on. Can you see that? Let's turn that off. It was a lot easier to actually uh, be cutting into the edges that have got cork in them. Can you see any joints? I can just see one there, but I don't think a blind man on a galloping horse would be seeing it. But all in all, what an impressive ceiling. 300 pound well spent, I would say. And the question will be, what would you charge for doing something like this? Don't forget I lined it and I used wall rock. Well, how impressive is that? That has just lifted this room to actually give it some color. And you're going to say to me, Phil, how did you know where the pattern matches were? Very difficult. I was just looking to try and get something that was matching up on the edges just there and clearly I could get the line going across there and the line there but all in all very very pleased with the outcome of that paper give us some comments below like and subscribe thanks very much